another wig dilemma. When I first started out, everything I got was a silver, gray, or white. I was really afraid to go with something that was rooted. I just didn't think I could pull it off in the beginning. I do like to advise that if you are getting your first wig and you're silver like I am, maybe going silver is really the best first wig to get. So it's not too different from where you are, so it's not jolting every time you look in the mirror because you don't want to look yourself in the mirror and go, oh my gosh, who's that? Because sometimes going with something just totally different is just going to be maybe in the beginning too night and day, but as you get comfortable wearing your wigs, I'm going to show you today how a rooted wig might be just the choice you want to go for. I have really super thin hair, and I do get a lot of comments going, your hair looks just fine, your bio hair looks really good on you, but see, I can't really do anything with it in the front. It's just that, and because I can't get lift on it, and the back of it is so thin that you see my pink, pink scalp shining through and it seems like I can't do anything to get volume or lift back here. It's just really thin and I think just because of the COVID age, hormones, male pattern, hair losses, you can see here, here up close. If you look, I'm like two fingers back of where my hairline used to be. That's that much back away from my face. I'm just not comfortable with it, and I think that's where we all are sometimes, is that our hair loss just really gets to us. You had this beautiful hair when you were younger, and I think I've shared pictures with you before. Here's one when I was had brunette hair, and yeah, I had lovely hair. I was very confident about myself, but as I started aging and losing, and my hair getting thinner and thinner and thinner, I just want to do something about it. Yep, and so I did. I turned to wigs, and that's just how I have gone forward to say I'm not going to be defeated about my hair, and I am just going to do something about it, and wigs are such a lovely way to do that. For all of, the, all of you that think I should just live with this, I appreciate this, and I think you're trying to encourage me to say be okay, but I, with my wigs, I'm better than okay now. I'm very, very happy and feel confident and love wearing them. So we're all good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let's get started. I'm not going to brown my roots out. I'll link a video that I did on browning this out or after the video's over, just go to my playlist because it's there about how to transition your gray hair or blonde or redhead to a dark rooted or all brunette wig. Okay, so there we go. I have cut my hair more and more. I've found that it was just too thin to keep any length on it at all. All I do is just wrap it around, Velcro it. I get it in a spot that it's not gonna show right in the, into the lace. I'm gonna start with the gray one and then we'll, I'll show you. Don't, don't be afraid to try a rooted wig if you haven't done that yet. And then, after you get comfortable wearing your rooted, I think then jump into a redhead, a brunette, a dark chocolate, a mocha, whatever you feel comfortable in, then have the courage to do that. But today we're gonna to start off with current events. These are those wig stands that I use to hold my wigs up. So I don't like to just put, put them all into a drawer or, I, you know, all of the boxes because out of sight, out of mind, I like seeing, seeing them. In fact, I'll take a picture of how I put my wigs out so that when I come in to do my makeup, that I just grab what wig I'm going to wear that day. I just grab the back like that and I just put the front of my forehead in and then I'm going to... Get those pushed in. Get her where I want her parted. Give her a little brush out. Here you can see how it looks. This is heat friendly. So if you wanted to do something with these and curl it even more or get it really, really straight for maybe kind of an edgier look. I don't know if you can tell, but this doesn't quite pick up the shine. And it's because, well, silver and white are reflective colors. And even my own hair, unless I just really spray it down with dry shampoo, after I wash my hair and blow dry it, it's really shiny. I mean, just 
as shiny as this is. When I step outside in the daytime, I don't think this looks as shiny as it does here under these lights. I would take you outside to show it to you, but it is a gray rainy day here in the Netherlands, and it's a gray rainy day almost always here in the Netherlands. So, But there are some sunny days and lighter days, and I promise to start trying to take you outside with me, maybe show you a little bit around the city I live in, in the Netherlands, and so you can see a side of it, but also just to give you an idea what this looks like outdoors. So this is current events, and I'm going to put the particulars right here beside it. If this is a wig that you think you want to look into, it has like some movement. I wore this on an airplane from on a 14-hour flight from the U.S. to the Netherlands. It was fantastic. I thought that the security guards would stop me. I'm so afraid. They're like, what happens if they say, uh, ma'am, you need to take that wig off or you need to take your hair off or what? I don't know what I thought. What if they do that? What if I'm in? What if I'm in the airport going through security and I have to take it off? You know what? I guess I just would and let them be the ones going. Oh my goodness! Sorry, and I'm you know I just laugh and yeah, that's that's what I would try to do is just smile and laugh and. Um, just do it, you know, because, you know, it is what it is. So the other one I want to show you, that looked great on, right? It, she's one of my go-to favorites. I think because she is just easy to wear and around my, around family and friends, you know, people that aren't real used to see me with my brunettes and different colors of wigs, I sometimes am comfortable, more comfortable in my silver. I think it maybe sometimes it solicits less comments when I'm in a, at a, a birthday par family birthday party or friends or things like that because sometimes I don't want it to just walk in and everybody be focused on what hair I'm wearing that day and when I'm wearing my silver white wigs they don't seem to do that they go oh well, you know hair looks nice and and sometimes you just want to sometimes you just kind of want to be low-key about how you're wearing your hair so that's what I would suggest if that's where your comfort zone is then um, stay with something similar to if you're brunette stay brunette if you're silver white transitioning stay closer in that range of what your hair is and you'll feel more comfortable because maybe no one will notice even your closest family so go with comfort first that's my suggestion once you decide to get out of the comfort zone like I needed to do to put on a wig with roots I really had to just step out there and buy one and say, okay, okay, Mel B, let's do this. So again, I'm going to grab it here, pull it down, pull it back to my hairline. See what a difference. And I'm going to show you something here. See my have white roots. That's why I powder. That's why I use root spray or powder to blend it in. And here's the link again to see how I brown out my roots to tie in with the wig. So watch that video or go to my playlist to find it there. But the hairline is from ear tab to ear tab. It has a wide part. I think this is more youthful look. I think the when I did this, it brought me into, gosh, I can wear a brunette colored wig. I wanted, so what I would do if you didn't have time or want to brown out your roots is just pull some of this front See that? Pull some of this out. Might look a little bit better. See how there's these highlighted pieces coming through? I love the way Raquel Welch Roots does these highlights in the front. I wish I could see these more in person. And that's what I hope you do. You know, if there's a wig, you're struggling on what kind of wig. I advise ladies in messages all the time. They're asking me about it. Go to a local wig salon, if at all possible. Try one on. You know, buy it there if you want to. Sometimes they're going to be more expensive. Uh, wig salons do not give usually discounts. And so that's why I went to buying wigs online. And I'll tell you the truth, my first wigs I bought was on Amazon. I think over the, the, the year just progressed and progressed and got to where I wanted to have a better quality and better quality because not all wigs are created equal. 
Sometimes you do get what you pay for. If you're going to if you're willing to spend over 200, 300, 400, you're going to get a great wig from Raquel Welch, Tress Allure, El Tress, um, Ellen Villa. I can't name them all. There's so many good ones out there. But I'm telling you, if you're willing to invest 200, 300, 400 for a good synthetic, heat friendly, you're going to find some really great wigs out there that are super comfortable. This is so, so comfortable. I can't even tell you. I can wear this wig, and I have worn this wig before, for 24 hours traveling by international flight. And I was prepared to, and I might film that. I'm going to be traveling to the U.S. pretty soon in a month. And I might just kind of document, do a doc, documentary type of um, how I did it and some of the things I did. And I actually have like a stocking cap that sometimes I just wear anyhow when my head is cold. And I was prepared to, in the plane, when, you know, there's some type during the plane where they turn the lights out and then everybody lays back and puts on their mask and I always put on my mask to block the light out so I can go to sleep and I was prepared because I thought I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep in it or and then be comfortable when I woke up so I was prepared to slip it off put it in a satin bag put on the stocking cap put on my eye mask and go to sleep I mean come on let's face it I don't know those people on the plane they're sleeping they're going to sleep they're not going to pay attention to me and the um, flight attendants they don't know me and they're not going to you know They've seen weirder things than someone taking their wig off and putting a stocking, you know, a nice little cute stocking cap on. I'll do a video that's about following me on a day in the life of a wig traveling internationally. Something I think maybe that will just encourage you that you can do the same thing. Uh, there's so many places to wear your wigs. You can swim in your wigs. You can get them wet. Can you imagine my normal hair? I can't get it wet out in public. And it's, it's horrible when, you know, people say all the time, wear your bio hair, but, you know, when it gets wet, I look like a wet rat, and it, it's not pretty. Then I feel really uh, conscious and, and feel, I just feel bad about myself. So, yeah, that's why I wear wigs. One of the very many reasons I love to wear wigs. Wigs have come a long way, baby. Okay, so what do you think? Silver or rooted? Well, I think you don't have to pick. I say get both of them because one day you want to be silver and the other day rooted. I say buy them both. You deserve it. I did. This is a great wig because it is so flat. So if you really smooth it back and in the winter time, I like hats. Hats are a really fun way to also accessorize and elevate a wig. And this doesn't have so much volume that it keeps you from wearing a beret, a cap like this, or maybe a stocking cap. This is really nice when it's cold out or raining and you just don't want any, you want extra security, maybe you're riding a bicycle, gonna be someplace super windy. Do you see what I mean, that variety is the spice of life? That's why I have so many wigs, so many hats so many choices because that's just how I roll. So don't be afraid to go out there and make it a great wig day. Be bold, be beautiful, be you, and don't forget, don't let age define you. It's just a number. Doing my darlings. Bye.